Today we're going to talk about applications of horizontal asymptotes. We talked about that on Monday. We analyzed rational uh, fractions, rational functions, which are fractions, um, on Monday. And I thought we would have to continue it until today, but actually we we did most of it. Um, much to my surprise, uh, I did not assign any rational functions with points of discontinuity, which is just as well. It makes what you have to study and what I have to test just a little bit easier. OK, so we are go going to talk about the horizontal asymptotes since that can feel really strange. OK, so here is the first problem. The function n of t equals 0 0.7t plus 1200 over 2t plus 6 for t greater than or equal to 15. That means we start at 15. Gives the body concentration, the human body concentration n of t, that's what n of t is, in parts per million of a certain dosage of a medication after time t in hours. So what does the concentration in your body look like after one hour, two hour, three hours, four hours? Um, once the medication has already been in your body for 15 hours. That's what this says. OK, well, what does N of T approach as T goes to infinity? Well, let's look at the graph and that will tell us also, but then we're going to find out mathematically exactly what, um, uh, what the concentration in your body is near, what number it's near um, uh, after 50,000 hours, for instance. My goodness, do you even live that long? I suppose you do. But 50,000 hours is still one heck of a lot of hours. OK, so I'm going to get the calculator here and I'm going to go to Y equals and I'm going to graph this being very, very careful to put parentheses around the top and parentheses around the bottom or you'll get entirely the wrong look. It won't give you any good information give you a lot of bad information. So parentheses 0 0.7, instead of T, I'll use X plus 1200. That way I don't have to change it to T, although I could, but I don't want to. Divided by parentheses 2T plus 6, X plus six. All right, now before we go on, I am going to change X min as far as I can see to the left to the minimum stated here, which is that X is going to start at positive 15. So I'm going to set this equal to positive 15. And then X max, I'm going to let it go to 50. I could let it go to 100. I could let it go. Well, yeah, why not? Let it go to 100. And then I'll make the scale 5. Now, Y min is going to be 0 because that's the concentration, and you're not going to get a negative concentration. But how high will the concentration go? At this point, I can't say that I know. So I think 10 will work. Excuse me, maybe it won't. Let's graph. Cool. 
That gives me a lot of information, doesn't it? All right, well, let's try for 500. And then y min should be zero and y max, let's go higher. You see, you get information every time you graph it. And then, and then you can get a better and better picture. So I'm going to go to 100. And I will make the Y scale 5. Meanwhile, if my X is going to 500, I think I'll make the X scale 10. Okay, here we go. Okay, well look at that. This starts out there, wherever there is, and um, goes down, 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 down. What does drag screen mean? Drag it where? I have to explore that. But right now, look at how the concentration keeps going down and down and down and down, and it gets really close to zero. Well, let's see what the math tells us. Let's find the horizontal asymptote because what we have just found is this. Let's go back to the graph. What we've just found is that the x-axis, probably the x-axis, is the horizontal asymptote. And that's the number, the horizontal asymptote is the number that the graph approaches, gets really closer and closer and closer to as, as, the, um, as the X approaches a very large number. Here, remember, it approaches 500. That's pretty big, but we could go to 50,000 if I didn't want to use up all my memory. So let's do this. We are going to calculate like we did uh, Monday. We're going to calculate uh, the horizontal asymptote. And remember, you, you, um, um, you calculate the horizontal asymptote, the HA. Aha. By taking the highest degree term on the top and putting it over in a fraction, a ratio, the highest degree term on the bottom. So that will be 0.7 T over 2 T. Now notice that the leading term on top and the leading term on the bottom uh, they both have the same degrees, and when that happens, the variable cancels. It just cancels because they're exactly the same, and you're left with 0 0.7 divided by 2. So let's put that in the calculator. Second quit gives me a blank screen, and I'll have 0 0.7 divided by two, and that gives me 0.35. Ah, okay, 0 0.35. That's my horizontal asymptote, not zero. I mean, it looks like zero when I look at the graph. Looks like zero. But remember, this is going to 100 now. So it's difficult to see whether that's 0 or 0 0.35. 0 0.35 is only about one third of the way above the x axis. All right, well, then what does the concentration approach as time gets very, very large? That is, T goes to infinity means as the hours pass, 
and you get a very large number of hours, like 50,000, 100,000 hours, a million hours. Well, I was going to say it approaches zero, but no, it doesn't. It approaches 0 0.35, which is the answer right here. I would have said this just from looking at the graph, and I would have been wrong. So this approaches 0.35 parts per million. I know that because that's what it says right here. N of T, N parts per million. Okay, so 0.35 parts per million. Now what might give you a little pause here is that it doesn't say that the concentration goes to zero. What this says is that 100 years from now, if an archaeologist exhumes your body and checks it chemically, it will find a little bit of whatever that drug is, just a trace of what that drug is. That is scary. OK, well, explain what the meaning of the answer is. That's exactly what it means. It means that the concentration never goes to zero. Hmm. OK. But you see that the horizontal asymptote has a really important meaning for the rest of us. Now, maybe it's a really good anti-cancer drug. And uh, the fact that it never goes away means that it keeps messing with any cancer molecules. I don't know enough medicine to even know if that's possible. But there you go with the first problem. Now, in this problem, they've actually graphed it for you. OK, the population P in thousands. So if, for instance, you had the answer one, that would really be 1000. The answer 3.5 would really be 3.5 times 1000, which would be what, 3500, something like that. Um, OK, the population P in thousands of a resort community is given by P of T that is population as a function of time, equals 400t over 2t squared plus 600, where t, time, starts at zero and t is in months. So when t equals zero, that's the very beginning of the season. It's a resort community, the very beginning of the season, and then T is going to get larger and larger and larger and larger. So A, we're going to find the population when T equals zero, zero months, that is, that's the beginning. And something to remember, and I'm going to make this really large so I can write on it. What T equals zero means is, T equals zero means something very special that you'll meet the last week of this semester and the semester's only got five weeks left to go. T equals zero means quotation marks in the beginning. That is the beginning of your measurement. In the beginning. Okay. Now we'll. I just wanted to fit that in. Okay, now we'll go back up a little bit. Find the population. Yeah, now notice I, I included the answers here. So for that reason, we're going to find um, the first two. 
And then I leave it up to you on the version that you have. Probably the numbers will be, these numbers probably will be a little bit different. I can make that smaller, yeah. Um, so we'll find the first two, and then you'll know how to do it. Okay, well, T equals zero. Here's what that means. The time at T equals zero. Well, here's our function, P of T, right? Population at time T equals 400 T over 2 T squared plus 6. We put a zero in for every T, because T equals zero. Well, 400 times zero is zero. And this is zero, or can be thought of that way. This is six. Now this is okay to have a zero on the top of a fraction. That's okay. Zero divided by six is zero. And you can get that out of your calculator. So the population is zero in the beginning. So you must have started your measurement right before the resort season had begun. Population is zero. Okay, now T equals one is the next measurement we're going to make. That will be 500, uh, 400, times one over two times one squared plus six. So why didn't I just write that bigger? I have no excuse. Four hundred times one over two times one squared plus six, 400 times one is 400. And two times one squared. Well, one squared is one times one, which is one. So that will be two times one, which is two, plus six, that'll be eight. So 400 divided by eight is 50. All right, well, I could say there'll be 50 people there, right? Wrong, but let's just go with it for a minute. Population after one month is, this is the population in thousands, OMG. Fifty thousand. No, oh, they do use a comma. Okay, fifty thousand, not fifty. And look, that's why this graph shoots up like this. I bet if we put in 1.5 or something, it would be even higher. It might get all the way up here. Because that looks like more than 50,000 when it gets to whatever this T coordinate, which is like an X coordinate, whatever that is. But you aren't being asked to find it. So plug a three in, you'll get that. Plug an eight in, you'll get that. If you have exactly the same numbers that I have right here. OK, now. Find the horizontal asymptote of the graph 
and determine the value that P of T approaches as T goes to infinity. All right, let's put that into English. T and X act the same way. <clears throat> so instead of calling this the X axis, we call it the T axis. Same thing. Okay. And P of T is just Y. The Y coordinate. So, notice how as time goes on, the population drops, 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 and you can see it's just continuing on down, 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 and getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. How do I know it's the x-axis this time? Because the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the highest degree term on top to the highest degree term on the bottom. The horizontal asymptote is, here we go. P of T is going to equal 400 T, that's the highest degree term on top. It's also the only degree, uh, the only term on top, and the degree is one because t is to the one power over two t to the second power the top is degree one arrow degree one and the bottom is degree two you have two choices here you can memorize that when the power on top is lower than the power on the bottom, then this is going to be your horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, which is the x-axis or the t-axis here. The book tells you to memorize it because you haven't learned a lot about limits yet. but I'm going to use limits. Go ahead and, and do some canceling. 400T over two times T times T. <laughs> That's a four, not a T. Okay, we're gonna cancel this T with one of these T's. So what we're left with is 400, 400 over 2t, which is 200 over t. I didn't even have to bother to break it down. Now imagine, just stop and use your imaginer. Suppose time is going to a really large number, because that's what the horizontal asymptote assumes, that these numbers keep going forever and ever. So much for end time, right? We assume that this is going to go forever and forever, so think up a really big number like 10 billion we'll have 200 over 10 billion. You could think of something bigger, 10 trillion, but I'm willing to stop at a billion. Now that's a million. Here's a billion. I'm gonna put that in my calculator and see what number I come out with. Um, okay, clear. Now, 200 divided by 10,000, uh, 10, <laughs> 10 billion, 
10. Here's the hard part. Oh, yeah, 10. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's a whole bunch of zeros. That is scientific notation because your calculator freaks out when it gets a number that's very, very large or very, very small. Now, if you had science in high school, you probably remember a little bit about scientific notation. Um, I'm going to translate this for you. This is going to be, come back, come back. There. Two, so 2.0, move the equal sign. I'm going to put the equal sign up here. This equals two times zero, I mean 2.0. Now that minus eight, E minus eight, what does that mean? That means you go to the left eight units, so I'm going to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My decimal point is going to move there, and each of these little valleys here is going to hold a zero. So the decimal point is moved way out here and the number we now have is 0 0.0000002. That is an incredibly small number. It's a number so close to zero, it might as well be zero. That's why the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Because what happens when this, this number, 10 billion, becomes 10 trillion? It's gonna be, that number's gonna be even closer to zero. So in the far future, the population is going back to zero. It was zero in the beginning and it's going back to zero at the end. That's what that says. That's what the horizontal asymptote shows. And complete the following. P of T, which is just Y. The numbers on the Y axis. These are all in thousands. Y goes to zero. That is, it goes down here. Closer and closer and closer, the larger these numbers get. And the short way to say it is P of T goes to zero as T goes to zero. This is what a limit is. So you can memorize that if the degree or the power on the top is lower than the highest degree on the top, is lower than the highest degree on the bottom or the lowest power on the top is lower than the uh, lowest power on the bottom. Um, yeah, just remember that your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero. But the great thing about limits is that I don't need to memorize it. All I have to do is go through these steps.
Okay. In time, no one lives in the community. Yes, alas. I live in a resort community, Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, Northwest Arkansas uh, has Beaver Lake and all sorts of wonderful things you can do um, with or without a mask. So if you don't live in Northwest Arkansas, you ought to come visit and just forget about all the stress of life, my opinion. <laughs> 